Caden Clark has emerged as one of the top U.S. men's national team prospects, and today we have an exclusive interview with him here in the channel himself. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to another player interview. And today we're going to talk with Caden about his loan back to the New York Red Bulls from Leipzig, U.S. Men's National Team U20 camp, U.S. Men's National Team senior camp in December with some funny stories of Greg as well. Well, some great stories, actually, you don't want to miss out. But before you start, make sure to hit that like button. I will not be requesting it during the video, but I can't force you to do so. And that's all I have to say. All right, so let's play the intro and bring in Caden. All right, Caden, the first time you appeared here in the channel was actually on a video call instead of coming for an interview. <laughs> you yeah. did a video call in the middle of a stream while you were fighting hypothermia in Minnesota. Uh, thankfully, you won. How are you doing, Caden? Now you're in a warmer place, right? Yeah, I'm in California, uh, Palm Springs, and uh, I'm doing well. I just got out here with uh, New York Red Bulls and, and getting after it in preseason. So you're back with the New York Red Bulls, and that is actually the first thing I wanted to talk about, right? Uh, by the way, I'm wearing the jersey here to represent yeah. it. But <laughs> so New York Red Bulls, uh, obviously you had a little bit of a confusing moment here. Can you talk us about what happened with the transfer? Because you were at one point last year they announced you were joining Leipzig in January, and what happened with Leipzig? Why are you back? What are your goals this season? What's going on right now? Yeah, so I mean, we kind of looked at it and. Uh... We just thought, what would be the best situation for me to to get playing time and to to keep developing? So, we looked at it, and going mid year um, into a top club like that is not easy. You know, they have a lot of midfielders who are playing. Uh, they weren't in the best spot at the moment, so um, you know, bringing in a new guy and a young guy and playing him um, probably wasn't ideal for them. So, yeah, just looking at it, and we just thought this was the best situation for me. Um, and of course, just have a good year and, and see what happens after the season. But yeah, the plan is to go and in next January. I know it's going to be a longer preseason next January because of uh, the World Cup. So it'll be a great opportunity for me to, to get involved in the team and, and really have a good preseason um, with them before they kick off the rest of the year. So um, that's kind of the plan right now. And, and to, to really be focused this year on being in New York. And and uh, I kind of view it as of I'm a New York player right now. I kind of want to be focused here. Um, I don't want to talk about you know, outside this interview, of course, I know you have questions and everything, but uh, later on in the year, I don't want it to be, uh, okay, what's your decision about Leipzig, this and that. I kind of want to focus on uh, just being present in New York and, and giving New York my all. Yeah, so I do want to dive into New York this season of your goals and aspirations in terms of individual goals that you might have and as your team also because we'll get to that very soon i just want to ask one more thing about leipzig and then let's leave that out because like you said I'm open to it. it's all good it's not about leipzig right now so uh did did it, the situation of leipzig seems to be getting better now but there was a moment this season that it was kind of iffy right with jesse and everything did the whole thing of jesse getting fired and leipzig struggling with the season of figuring out what was going on, did that play a role too of them thinking that maybe it wasn't the right environment to just throw you in there yeah i think that was part of the decision i mean jesse being there definitely would have helped me get adjusted but it, it really had nothing to do with the decision i think uh i signed with them and made the decision before he was appointed manager so it didn't really have uh, any influence at all um and i know um, a big question for me, my family was, okay, am I going to go to Europe now and, and get the adjustment? You know, I, I had a, a lot of opportunities to go on loan to, to other top clubs in Europe, but we just kind of decided this was uh, the best decision to stay in the family and, and to, you know, work hard and hopefully get game time this year. All right. So now let's go to the present, which is the New York Red Bulls this season. Last season, you had a very hot start right away, breaking through the team, starting, scoring goals, getting assists. And then you had appendicitis, which, by the way, I had it too. So <laughs> I know what you went through to a certain extent, right? Not as a professional player, but I, I understand what happens, the recovery process. And unfortunately, when you got it, you got cut from Gold Cup, right? You were in that roster in the Gold Cup. Yeah, so from what I'm aware, um, I was in the roster. And um, even after my surgery, we were still talking to them and, and figuring out, okay, can I get fit in two weeks to be on the final roster. Um, we just decided it was it was best not to, uh, as, as a group with U.S. soccer in New York, not to, to rush it. And uh, getting surgery and being out for a 
four weeks after the surgery and then doing fitness again and then you know just a lot going on so we just decided it was best that i would remain with new york and, and really get back uh to full fitness do you feel like that killed your momentum during the season too a little bit yeah absolutely i think um you know leaving mid-season especially the way we play is such fast pace you know um you know you're pressing in your transition moment so definitely i think it was uh the worst thing that could have happened to me um honestly in that time frame yeah and and for many that don't understand too i don't know what you went through with appendicitis but also a few weeks after it's it's a little weird to eat sometimes the digestive si system is not it, it takes the recovery takes a lot longer than just when you can get back to training right a few things take a little bit longer to adjust with appendicitis and i'm sure you went through along with killing the momentum you were in a hot streak yeah. uh till a point where like we just talked about you made it to the national team for an important competition the senior squad and then that obviously is a buzz kill but a fresh start this season with the new york red bulls which lead me to ask you um what are your individual goals for this season if you have any right in terms of are you going to try to ramp up the game with goals more assists or just contribute to the team and the final aspiration of this season with the new york red bulls leave mls with a title yeah i mean that's ideal right um leave them less with the title i think of course that's the main goal but it's it's how we get there is more important as well um you know the steps along the way so i kind of put something out there for myself um so last year i think i had maybe four goals four assists or around there so about eight points i had about eight points um total so i would say this year i'm gonna go for 15 points um goals and assists combined and uh see if i can can crush that number i think um it's possible. I think last year I could have had 10 goals if I stayed healthy um, and didn't have the appendicitis, which uh, in fact, yeah, after coming back from, I had a ton of stomach issues. Like at halftime or, or after the game, I would be in so much pain and I was like, what is going on? I had to take a bunch of Tums, like, you know, those those stomach medicines. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, this is painful, man. I didn't know if something was wrong or or maybe they didn't do something right in the surgery. But uh, yeah, it just took some time, of course, to get back into things. Um, but yeah, for this year, I think it's 15 points. I think, um, you know, yeah, 10 goals is possible. I think just got to be in the in the right state of mind, and, and which I am, and, and uh, yeah, just go after it. You're looking confident and positive, which is all you need to do to start the season. And hopefully the team also looks good and everything, and that will translate to your game. Plus, when you get a combined 15 goal or assist combined, right, both stats combined, um, it's not really an individual um, goal because when you do that, you're already helping your team, right? If you right. can combine and progress for 15 goals, you know how hard it is to score at soccer. 15 goals is a lot in a season for a team. So that would be a pretty big... Uh, before we move on to the United States, because I want to talk about the U.S. men's national team. Um, in terms of New York, I've seen you play so many different positions under Struber and New York Red Bulls. Um, you played sometimes as an... I even saw as an 8. I saw as a 10. We saw you wide a lot. Um, for this season, do you know where he might play you? And regardless of that, is there a preferred position for you that you think that is best for your game? Yeah, I think um, I think it just depends on the way we're going to play. If we're going to play a five-back or a four-back, it kind of depends on that. But um, I'm comfortable in the middle. But, um, you know, sometimes the game doesn't go through the middle the way we, uh, the way we play. It's just the way we set up. Um, which is it has its benefits of course i think i think our style fits a lot of our players and and uh you know we execute it well i think to a certain point where last year we were scraping off points off of really good teams um so i think personally for me uh, of course being in the midfield but sometimes uh you know the game locks up and you can't get the ball out there so don't mind being out wide i think you get a lot more uh, ball involvement out wide um rather than in the middle but i think this year maybe i'm gonna come back a bit deeper um, you know, playing in that 10 position, but coming back deeper into the game and, and really try to get involved more um, from that standpoint. I think that's something I can develop and, and get comfortable being in, you know, sometimes the deeper pop, deeper pockets and, uh, you know, influence, influencing the game from back there. Yeah, being more creative, right, in the, in the sense um, the playmaker, the team were right there too. I'm looking forward to seeing the New York Red Bulls, but Let's move on here to the next part of the video here, which I want to talk about the U.S. men's national team. And more specifically, I want to start with the U-20s. Then we'll dive into the December camp. The reason I talk about the U-20s, too, is 
one thing many people might not know is you staying in MLS. I, I don't know how it's going to work right with um, New York Bro Red Bulls releasing and, and things like that. There's more to it. But you staying in the United States instead of abroad increases the odds of you being available for this U20 cycle. And I think many people don't understand how important this cycle is. You all will be playing a tournament during the summer that will qualify us. Hopefully we'll make it qualify us to the U20 World Cup next year and the Olympics in yeah. 2024. I can't emphasize enough how important this is, not just for for the development of players, but growth of soccer in this country. We need to play these tournaments, the Olympics, the casuals watch it. So let's start the Revelations Cup. You were there at the Revelations Cup. Obviously, it was a little bit messy in the beginning because they had just gotten a coach. Um, Vadas just had just taken over, put up a roster. You showed flashes of talent in the moments you were able to. We didn't really look like a team at times, but you were able to show flashes of talent. That penalty kick, that, <laughs> that was a pretty cool penalty kick that you took. Uh, what, what did you take from that camp specifically last year? And then we'll come into this year. Yeah, so we were all kind of called in. Um, you know, some of us playing the MLS, some of us playing USL or, or um, you know, teams in Europe as well. So a lot of us MLS <laughs> guys came in um, right after a match day. Um, and the Europe guys came in with us, um, you know, kind of the day before the Brazil game or two days, I think. So... I mean, we had to do a recovery session because we just played and then we had to play Brazil, um, which is fun. You know, we have high expect expectations for ourselves, except, um, you know, yeah, we didn't have the right, um, you know, I don't think the timeline was ideal for anyone. I think a certain the system and how I want to play and, and a bunch of us young players who have a lot of talent coming in together. Um, it's kind of like, how, how do you gel it um, and really get the best out of it? So. That was a total learning curve for us. I think it was a good thing that we got to Max 4-1 because it so much talent in the team. I think it was a good wake-up call uh, that this isn't going to be easy. You know, you have a lot of talent, the whole group, but how do you use it? I think that was the biggest thing for us. Um, and just to move on, like, to the last camp we had, I think, two weeks ago or a week ago, um, you know, we're really working on that. Okay, what's our identity? How are we going to play? What's our strengths? What's our weaknesses that we need to develop and, uh, you know, watch out for? Uh, I think it's it's very it's a very very good group, which we know the circumstances this summer, um, and how important it is. And I think everyone's aware of it. So I think you'll see the best out of this group. I think it's going to take a little bit of time, um, but by then we should be ready to go. So this last camp that you talked about was in January, and you guys were together for two weeks. Uh, did you guys play friendlies? How did that go? Um, where did you play? Can you give us? Because we we didn't have much information on it, right? It was kind of closed doors. Uh, whatever you can obviously tell us uh, how it went in terms of what position did you play or formation how did the team look any players that you combined well who did you guys face yeah so it was a it was a camp with uh, some players from the revelations cup um, but also a lot of young players that we haven't seen yet so I think it was a good chance for them to to get an opportunity to show head coach Mikey um, you know like like what they're about, I think it's it's a good it's a good chance for them because we have a very solid group, but there's a lot of young talent as well that could uh, also make a difference in this lineup or this uh, this team. So um, yeah, we played New York Rebels, um, which we tied zero zero, and we played FC Dallas, which we won one zero. So from that camp, um, you know, it was a positive. I think uh, it was a positive, and we have a camp next month as well in March March twentieth. We go down to. To Argentina, if I'm not mistaken, um, which of course I hope to be a part of that. Um, and that's that's that was, those are going to be important games that make big strides. I think against we play against Argentina and maybe uh, Uruguay, if I'm allowed to say that. I don't know if, <laughs> if I am, um, but uh, yeah. yeah. So you you guys will have a U20 camp. Where it's going to be, we yeah. don't know. We'll have a U20 camp next month. We don't know where it's going to be yet, um, but it should be uh, against good opponents that will test us. And uh, yeah. Um, help and us. in the U20s, uh, is there a specific position that you're being played? Yeah, it's kind of a, I play out wide, um, but I come in a lot. I come in as a 10 and uh, he kind of help build out sometimes or um, help us get us forward or, or stay out wide, of course. I think I have many options and I have a lot of good freedom out there um, to kind of read the game and see what's necessary. And uh, yeah, just kind of kind of pick what I want to what I want to uh to do if I want to be inside or be out wide 
And in this um, U20 squad in Revelations Cup right now, is wh which player are you closer to as a, maybe a friend or a guy that you're closer to in the roster? Is there anyone? Yeah, of course, I'm close with the, uh, like, Jack McGlynn. He's, he's my roommate. He's kind of a clown. <laughs> uh, we, he's so slow, man. We clown on him all the time. He's so slow. And that's what we kind of just, we call him, like, snail all the time. But, yeah, I'm pretty close with him. And, uh, yeah, the Philly boys, of course, um, just being around them so much, I think. Paxson and Quinn and Jack um, and then yeah Kate I've been really close to Kate in Mexico and and uh, yeah it was kind of got close there and oh Kate about Cow man yeah. Kate the, so, just a fun story for you right now when well, Kate Cow came here to the channel last year and yeah. he made a joke which I thought he was joking I don't know if he was serious or joking he said he joked about that he was going to become a right back right a fullback and then I just laughed it out and then the other day on Twitter someone shared um a video that San Jose was playing him as a wing back in preseason. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I guess Cade might be becoming a wing back and hey, transition. Wing, back is, wing back's fun, man. You get up, you get up and down quick. You have a lot of freedom, you know. You're in a higher position in the field. You get the ball a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot to it. He also can use ball. all his pace there too, all his pace yeah. and strength. It's what he likes yeah. to do, so that'll work for him. Exactly. That's, I mean... Now, Kind of at U20s, I was kind of playing like a wing back in some scenarios, but um, yeah, I don't mind it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, they're putting Pulisic in Chelsea there too. <laughs> so they, they love to put our they love to put our attacking players as a wing backs nowadays. But um, going to the senior squad because you had you were gonna have the Gold Cup experience. We talked about. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. It'll come eventually. Uh, but you had a senior squad experience in December, and it was a pretty long camp right you were there with um with greg and uh, the yeah. mls based roster for was it almost three weeks it was close right it had it was like two weeks it was like two weeks, two weeks? Yeah, yeah two full weeks of training and then the the bosnia game didn't play in the bosnia game but in terms of the camp there um how did that camp go and, and when you got called up I, I thought was it you that said someone said that did greg burhalter call you um when you got called up how was that <laughs> yeah so me and the Nike boys um, of a, like 2003 age group were at Nike headquarters. Who were the Nike boys? Tell us. Who was there? Kevin was Pepe? there. Pepe was there. Moses Nyman was there. Jogo. Um, Jonathan Gomez. Jonathan Gomez was there. Justin Che. Maybe. Who am I missing anyone? I think that's it. That's it. That was, that was there. Um, yeah. So we were like getting off the. We took a bus from the hotel to, to the headquarters and just got off the bus and like a number text me and it was just like hey are you free to chat for for two minutes and like no name no nothing like nothing i'm like okay let me ask let me ask one of my friends you know, whose number is this and they go yeah it's greg so responded back yeah i'll call you in two minutes and call them and you know just ask me if i'm ready to go uh how am i feeling this and that um Asked me the last time I scored, and I said, "Yeah, I scored a goal last weekend. It was offside, though, uh, you know." But uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was uh, yeah, it was a really cool getting a phone call from him. Uh, Greg, yeah. Greg, yeah. if you're watching this, you you need to tell someone that it's you texting. They can't just <laughs> hey, can't just text respect someone to the like guy. respect. To the guy. <laughs> you could have just ignored. The... Imagine if you looked at it and you're just like. Oh no, just who is this? I'm wrong well, number, dude. Wrong number. <laughs> yeah, and I just got a new phone and like I got I don't know, I lost really all my numbers. So I have no idea. I was like, okay, this could be Oh you know? okay. So so he had already been in touch with you. No, no, like this is just oh. to add on to that. Like I don't really respond to like numbers and I just lost oh, my right. yeah. So I wasn't going to, but then I was kind of like expecting it a bit because I got told that maybe I was gonna get called in, so I just you know made sure I didn't leave that that uh stone unturned all right so greg for now on make sure to say it's you when you text <laughs> greg <laughs> but but yeah and in terms of that camp um positive good experience um got to know burr halter his his um his coaching staff some of the players that are in the the net i guess um zimmerman is a player that definitely is on the roster right now locked into the roster he was there yeah. uh, who else were you there that you met that um I guess Zardes to roll down. All these guys have been in the roster before and have been. So you got to be with them a little bit and get a bit of the experience of what it is probably a men's national team camp. Yeah. Anything, anything you want to add to that? Nah, it was, it was a really cool experience. I think I, I, uh, 
yeah, I became good friends with Walker Zimmerman. He was at my table. Um, you know, we had a kind of assigned seats because of COVID. So I was eating every meal with, with uh, Zimmerman, Matt Turner, Brooks Lennon, and Kobe Henry, who was on my U20 team. Um, so yeah, getting really close with those with those guys is really cool. Um, Matt Turner was a really nice guy, uh, very smart. And uh, we do these like worksheets at lunch. It was kind of like a game, like a crossword and one other game that we played. But nah, I like them. I like Walker and, and Matt a lot. I think uh, yeah, really good guys. And and uh, I'll probably stay in touch with them throughout uh, my career. Or be playing with them soon. Or be playing with them soon. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. So, Caden, in terms of um, the men's national team camp, before we move on, when you were in camp, uh, if you're allowed to say this, because I don't know, Greg keeps some secrets and some not. Uh, did Greg use you? Because Greg usually goes on the 4-3-3. That's what we saw against Bosnia, what we've been seeing. Did he play you at the eight or did you play wide mostly? Yeah, um, I played more in the midfield. Played more in the midfield and uh, would come down in the buildup. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of receive the ball. And, and uh, yeah, I like the way they play, honestly. It felt good as a midfielder. I just don't come down that deep that often. So me getting used to it was kind of a, a new thing for me. But uh, once I got working and once I figured it out, kind of it was uh, enjoyable to play and had a lot of ball, a ball time. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was kind of figuring out for me of just being comfortable and getting, getting in the groove of things. And because, you know, you have all these players like Rodon and, And, you know, the, the normal squad who have been there to plenty of camps and, and uh, you know, it's, it looks pretty effortless uh, for them because they've been around it for a long time. And then a group of us young guys come in and, and try to, you know, just to match it and to, you know, learn it as quick as possible. So it was a good challenge for me to be in a new system um, and kind of learn different aspects of the game. Um, so, yeah, I came, came down a little deeper and, uh, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I like that too. Different role, right? Playing that eight role, more responsible for progressing the ball forward and creating something rather than staying out wide and waiting for someone to bring the ball to yeah. you. So <clears throat> for the US Men's National Team, that's it. Now this topic will be quick. Your development, a big part. We're going to talk about pretty much your development now till the end of the video. One being the Barcelona Academy, one being your dad um, has helped your development too. <clears throat> so sorry. In terms of that, the Barcelona Academy... Um, that played a huge role in your development, right? Just to make sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And then you played there with Julian Araujo and Matthew Hoppe. Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, Hoppe at one point was even a, an attacking midfielder. Then you became the attacking midfielder. He became a center forward, which is pretty much where he plays nowadays. Uh, how, how long did you stay in the Barcelona Academy? And what differences do you see from it in terms of that and actual U.S. soccer development, if there is any? Yeah, so I went there when I was 14, I think. I left around, I think I signed probably, I was there for about two and a half years. I left, I signed for New York when I was 16. Um, so I was there for like two and a half seasons. Um, and yeah, I loved every second of it. I think it's such a great place for, for young athletes and young soccer players to go. Um, you know, of course, they have the Barca Academy, but they also have the school there on campus. You know, they have dorm rooms, they have a hotel for your your family, your parents to come visit you, a restaurant, like, a pool, golf, like they have everything. Um, so it was a very, very cool experience for me uh, to go to. And uh, thank God, I mean, it was it was two and a half years that I loved and wish it was a bit longer. Uh, looking back at it now, it kind of flew by. Um, but yeah, it was it was amazing. I think compared to, to U.S. soccer, it's uh, hands down probably the best, I would say, in that, in that time. And, and I don't know how the rosters are looking now, but we had a lot of talent back then. Um, Obviously, a lot of players are going pro, um, and just to, just to compare, I think just working on little details and and really implementing, you know, Barcelona. I think that was the big thing was like we would mimic the sessions over there in La Masia. I would go to La Masia. It'd be the same drills, the same sessions. I would feel like at home because we do those drills every day in, in Arizona. So um, just from from that standpoint, it was identical. It was it was really identical the way we press, the way we play. You know, like mid block, the way we want to build up, it was identical, 100%, um, which is really cool to see. You know, it kind of falls down to, yeah, first team, Mama Sia, at Barca Academy, Arizona. You know, it was kind of the whole thing. So it was, it was, it was really cool. Yeah, amazing. Because that means, so based on what you're saying, the development 
to a certain degree, it's as if you were in La Masia, at least the philosophy behind it. And so was just just out of curiosity, Matthew Hoppy was an attacking midfielder there at one point. Yeah, he came as attacking midfielder and then they put him at striker because um, they had a lot of talent in the midfield as well. And they didn't I don't know if they had a striker or not, but he he uh, did amazing there. I think he scored like 20 goals in a season, maybe. <laughs> But that team was special. That team was really special. You had a lot of talent. The way they played, I think the head co the head coach was Sean McCaffrey, who's at Red Bull now in New York, um, which I love that guy. I think he's a, a top coach, and I wish he would get back to coaching, but we'll see what happens in the future for him. But what is he doing in New York? Special team. He's a uh, – don't want to get this wrong, but I believe he's like uh Like upper a management director? Like a, a cad yeah, like a director. I don't know if it's academy, but – works with USL, some first team and, and definitely Academy. Um, just making sure it's, yeah, it's fluid throughout the whole, the whole club. Got it. Upper management essentially, but yeah. not in the field coaching anymore. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Hopefully it comes back one day. Uh, so going, continuing on with your development, which you had the Barcelona years, uh, you do a lot of work with your dad, right? In and out of the field with your dad. Cause your dad did work, does work or did work. He worked for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, he worked for Minnesota Timberwolves, Vikings. Um, yeah. And what was he there? I don't know. That's a question for him. I mean, I, I know what he does because he works with me on the same stuff. So I wouldn't call him an athletic trainer. I wouldn't, I mean, performance coach. I would call him performance coach and, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like a one on one guy. And what exactly is the work you guys do together? I've seen some of it, um, talking to him before. I've seen videos. A lot of it is individual drills, workouts, and you even work with some players, right? You were working with some players in the off season with him. Yeah. And he even said that sometimes there's even like diet plans, everything, uh, whatever you're allowed to talk about. Uh, how does that work? What is the role your dad plays in your development? Besides being a dad, right? We yeah. know how dads are, but besides that. Kind of everything. I think uh, he really... I mean, he knows a lot about sports and sports science and mobility, stability, power, like strength, all of it. So um, he plays a huge part for me. I think uh, he never grew up playing soccer. So some for some soccer stuff, we go to another guy who's uh, whose name's Danny, works for Pura Vida out in Minnesota. Shout out to those guys. Um, they helped me through a really good off season and, and get prepared for the season. So um, props to them. And uh, yeah, so my dad, I mean, he kind of does it all. I think he's always at my apartment in Jersey. Uh, you know, whenever whenever I have a home game, he's always there, making sure I'm good to go, I'm ready. Um, you know, just just being there for me. I think that's that's the biggest thing he can offer is just always being there for me. I call him at one a.m. sometimes, have a question, or he calls me at one a.m. or or whatever it is. He's always he always has soccer on his mind. Um, sometimes to a certain extent, where I'm like, okay, dad, like like it's like eleven p.m. We can talk about the game tomorrow, you know, um, but he's obsessed with it, which is what you want. I think that's uh, I'd rather have it that way than to not be obsessed with it at all. So, um, you know, he just he's just a good dad and and he puts in a lot of work behind the scenes for me. Uh, just making sure that, yeah, I'm ready for my game. I'm I'm feeling good. You know, some t some days um, like on a game day, we'll go out there do like 20 minutes, 20 minutes of touches. Just make sure I'm good to go. I feel sharp. Um, and he's really, he's really helping me just become mature in those areas. I think sometimes I can do it on my own. I don't always need him to be there for me. So just kind of making sure I'm ready to go and, and, uh, yeah, just being prepared. He became a true soccer dad. <laughs> no, no. He became a performance coach, dad, everything. Yeah. I, I'm a hundred percent sure he plays a big role in and out of the field for you. Just not just for support, but Kaden, those were the main topics I wanted to talk about. And yeah. I mean, to add to that, I, I mean, he's probably learned more soccer than anyone else I know in the last like three, four years. It's crazy. The stuff he, the attention to detail, you would never expect someone that didn't play soccer to know. I think, you know, a lot of the experiences and things we can point out is because we play the game and we can, you know, you know, firsthand experience it. But him, he never played the game. So, him understanding what I'm talking about and, and seeing things and yeah, things that did right, things that did wrong is it's it's unbelievable. So he's really done his part and he's uh yeah, I mean he's a dad, but he's also probably my the best coach I got. So um full trust in Chris and uh now it's just time to go execute it. See, um that's the thing. 
passion for learning something. He studied it so much that even though he wasn't involved with it in early ages, he has figured out for the most part. Obviously, yeah, like you said, if you're someone involved with soccer, either coaching or has been watching for decades or played, it's easier to catch on to certain things. But the fact that he already caught up to all of these people just by studying the game the past yeah. few years, it's amazing, too, because he didn't work with soccer before. No. But yeah, Caden, that does it for this interview. It was great. Um, lots of fun. I'm still laughing. <laughs> still laughing about Greg Berhalter's text. Like, can I call? He's like, who are you? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, but I'm confident everything. I have a better shoe game than him. I'm confident. Uh, I, I actually... So I tried, I, I posted a picture of Jermaine Jones and I was wearing some Burhalter shoes in that one. People yeah. said my shoe game's not much behind Greg's. So <laughs> it's good. I'm on it too. And I actually bought new shoes, Nikes, because yeah. I'm going to go to the United States game here in Orlando against Panama. Okay. And I'm going to go and try to compete with Greg with whatever he's wearing. Which ones um, you bought? It's a surprise. I can't reveal it. I'll <laughs> tell you off the interview. I okay. can't tell everyone. I mean, I'll tell you like they're like an exclusive shoe or what are they it is an exclusive one yeah yeah they have to be then if you want to compete they have to be exclusive yeah they were a little pricey but it's like i gotta compete with greg um he's already beating me in the coaching career because he became the <laughs> national team coach so i gotta beat him on something i'm gonna beat him on shoes <laughs> so, but yeah, but yeah, yeah Kaden, thank you very much and whenever um whenever you're ready after we win the 2026 world cup and you're there with the team <laughs> We'll have you back here on the channel. We'll probably have you before that anyway. But be Kaden, before. thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for your time. I'll close here. Wait, let me end it.